Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Game, and if something mounts sort of the game you dragged today, I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Route 65. Y'all, you know, it's been a little while, but let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Oh. Okay. All right, well, I regale him with the events of the night up to the TJ's bullying. Those townie shits were saying you were pushers trying to harass Heather for some debts. Fucking what? Yeah, I don't know, Otter. Fuck. I kept calling for you. He looks surprised and scowls at the concrete floor between his feet. I should have been there to protect all of you. It seems like someone won the battle for the ox core in the other room as the music starts up again. Yep, still vampire, culty. Heh, <laughs> well, I got hit so hard the sky turned red for a bit. Leo's eyebrow raises some. I see his eyes move toward my head bump again. I remember stumbling around outside looking for you and Carl. I felt like I was walking for ages. The last thing I remember was a van. I see Leo shift, his shoulders raising up as high as they can go, that thing he does when he's tense. He looks at me, expectant. See anything else? My brow froze as I try to recall exactly what transpired. I remember it felt so much different than it does now in hindsight. I think I must have passed out then. Everything else was too hazy to recall. Recall without sounding insane is more like it. Leo's shoulders lower. He seems to be in thought now. I found you outside on the road. I thought you'd been hit by a car or something, and when I got to TJ, he wouldn't stop crying and smelled like booze. Not that I'm trying to sound like your mom's, Ed, but you had me crazy worrying. He rubs at his raw knuckles. Got into it with that fox guy after that. It's been a, uh, weird night. Why are you even here, man? He's taken visibly off guard by that question. The people here are friggin' nuts. He sighs and slowly lowers himself to a sitting position against the wall on the floor. He motions for me to do the same next to him, and I do. Dusting away any leftover broken glass first, though. A few people from the football team were going. Also, this one person invited me, and I wasn't going to tell them no. I'm about to ask who that was, but I'm interrupted fairly quickly. A couple weeks ago, I was looking for lawnmowers for sale. Um, okay. On Peyton list. Okay. And I was bored, so I clicked around a bit. There was this personal dating thing ad posted in the picture put it put and eh, picture put with it looked like you all censored up feel a cold tingle creep around my spine and my fingertips at those words. Hell, I thought I could even see me in the background. So I looked around a little on your phone while you were out. That same picture, but not edited for anything, was saved on your image folder, yeah? I just checked. I should be feeling angry at this complete invasion of my privacy, but I don't. I just feel paralyzed. I've known Leo since he didn't speak a lick of English, playing video games with me and Jasmine after school. He'd just imitate what, he said, what we said with a big dumb smirk on his muzzle, as if he was saying something profound. Remember, he got really hooked on the phrase "double jump that sucker." I've been yelling at his, at like I've been yelling at, at Jazz for like three hours when we were trying to beat this platformer game. I forget the name of. From then on, every time one of us was feeling down or facing some challenge, he'd tell us to double jump that sucker with that same smirk. Thank you. Know, water time. Oh lordy. Okay. I look up over to Leo now, trying to gauge his feelings, but his expression is indiscernible. Chase, you're like 15. You're already turning to complete strangers on the internet for sex shit? You know, you can talk to me. I wouldn't have even gone to this thing. He gestures to our surroundings. Two girls I haven't seen before walk by us in the hall without even, with even a passing glance. I look down, staring at my paws. I went from having the chills to feeling like my face is on fire. I shift some upon, I shift some upon the concrete floor. I, uh... Try waiting for the girls nearby to be completely out of earshot, though they stop in the hall and start showing each other something on their phones. Leo follows my gaze, letting out a quiet huff. Come with me. He rises up to his feet, pulling me up by the wrist. <coughs> Excuse me. Not having much choice as I'm tugged like a rag doll, I comply. Winding our way through the remnants of the partygoers, I fail to recognize anyone. One or two say hi to Leo as we pass, though most outright ignore me. I'm increasingly self-aware of how plain I look in contrast to the ripped, played, dawning, pierced, uh, pierced face and spiked hair crowd. The t-shirt and cargo pants, cargo shorts mu look, must, look must not really be in at the moment. We stop finally in front of one of the back exits. There doesn't seem to be food, booze, or drugs in this part of the factory, so we're alone. Once again, Leo turns his expectant gaze upon me, his brow knit. However, by now my nerves have evened out slightly and decide to counter the earlier question. Why do you care so much what I'm doing? That, that I am how I am. You didn't tell me about all this. So you're queer now, huh? I get that. Just fuck. You can do so much better than the old sags on Peyton list. What the hell? That was my business, man. Not yours. I just needed somebody to talk to, okay? So have you? Have I what? Met up with anyone. Screwed anyone. 
My eyes bulge in such sharp reactions. Even Leo holds up the flat of his paws defensively. Shit, all right, you really are new to this stuff, huh? You could say that, yeah. My parents didn't know until this morning. I guess last morning now. That's real rough, Otter. I cross my arms over my chest, letting my chin loll down as I stare at the dusty concrete floor. I'm gonna try to see if TJ is still out, out front and get a ride home with him. I'll leave you be with your friends. I turn, beginning to move when I hear a growl from behind me. Ah, Puchika! He grabs my shoulder, spinning me around to face him again. Why do you have to be like this, huh? I didn't choose to be like this, let- Ay, ay, ay! <laughs> your adorable Daphnis. Do you know how excited I got when I saw that email? That my suspicions were true? It was like a fucking fantasy, you know? And I started wondering why he didn't tell me, and then I got all mad, and now I've ruined this. It takes me a second to process being called adorable, a fantasy, and then and the reveal from Leo himself. I blink up at him. He blinks back at me. The wolf bites his tongue for a moment, trying to think before speaking. I wish you could go back in time and redo this. Second, yeah? Water time. Alright, y'all, we are back. I'll kick the huevos in of that scud who hurt you. I'll protect you from here on out, and I won't hide things from you. You're the fucking gold nugget in this shit mine, yeah? I wouldn't be any different than those sloshed up bastards if it hadn't been for you guys. I think back to when we were little, yeah? I don't remember any of what you were, what you were all saying, but I remember being happy because of you and you and Yaz. And you know, as you grew and shit, I started seeing you different like. It made me happy when I was around you before, but now it's like, I don't know. Otter, I can't describe it well. Just a whole new type of happy. Like, you know, I fucking love you, but I love you, you know? The final point. Don't fuck strangers on the internet. My face starts to tingle, my heart thudding so loud in my chest I'm sure Leo can hear it. I inhale shakily. This can't be happening. I must still be dreaming. I just... I'm cut, ha I'm cut off as I spy an awkward young shadow leering in the doorway, something bulky in his paws. Leo notes my shift of attention, turning about to face the figure. I see his muscles tense beneath his t-shirt. Chase, don't leave. I'll be back in just a second. Uh, yeah, sure, anything. I bump my knuckles together, watching the large wolf move to the doorway. I see him grab the shadowy fellow by the shoulder, trying to shift him away a little. The unknown guy thrusts what looks like a camera bag and tripod toward Leo. Leo shoves it right back. I see the wolf leaning in close, his grip tightening on the other. He mutters something. The shadow whinges, his head turning. He's looking at me. Starting to feel rather awkward, I approach the two. As I do, however, the figure departs back towards the main factory floor. I'm never hanging out with anybody but in those of our group from here on out, I swear, man. He curses something in Spanish under his breath. I used equipment like that before, but when I had to do a video story for the school news. The AV club rents them out to students for school projects. Are you, uh, working on a school project? I see Leo's muzzle pull up into a tight-lipped hold. He steps forward, taking hold of my shoulders. No, for the love of God, Chase, please don't ask me about it again. His demeanor seems more akin to begging than annoyance, flickers of fear in his eyes. I stand in, I stand in his grasp, slack-jawed. This is beyond strange, but I can tell he's serious about his request. All right, but... Chase. Leo, are you okay? I just want to get back to town with you, yeah? I guess I can respect that request. I'm assuming TJ's already been picked up by now. The last I saw of the links, he was crying in a beer-soaked puddle. I feel like a complete asshole for not checking on him in person. Though at least I wasn't as, it wasn't as bad as Carl, who just straight up fled home. Poor TJ's probably blaming himself for everything, too. And Jasmine's stuck at home with her shitty, f with her shitty family. Meanwhile, it turns out Leo is gay and like-likes me, and despite everything the stuff he described feeling about me, I feel about him. My emotions are so damn conflicted right now, this emo vampire music is actually resonating with me. Leo releases my shoulders and moves towards the back door, tugging it a few times. He huffs some, then gives it a hard kick with his foot. One of the hinges snaps and the door falls into a hanging diagonal position. The swift stop, the other two hinges snap off as well, leaving the metal door on the floor. We could have gone out the front. Well, uh... He stares at the door at his feet before looking up at me. Wouldn't have been as rebellious. You like destruction of property, don't you? I break a mirror at one rest stop. I break a mirror at one rest stop when I was eight. Because you didn't get the toy you wanted in your kitty meal. He smiles teasingly at me, the moonlight illuminating his backside. I can see the faint purples in the sky of inevitable sunrise as well. Hey, you know we don't have fast food joints like that around here. That was my one chance at getting that figurine from that stupid dinosaur movie. 
Your hand was so damn bloody, I thought you were the coolest. There was a pause. I stepped back into the fresh, far less musty air. The faint scent of Leo's cologne now more palpable. I crossed my arms, staring down the rusty metal of the fire escape-like stairwell. I still do. No oh, bullshit, man. I try to maintain a healthy amount of skepticism for his words now. Though looking at him now and having known Leo, uh, Leo long enough, I don't see any visible signs of deception. My dad actually suggested I'd be a decent journalist since I'm pretty good at reading people and their emotions. Though he might have just said that to try to dissuade me from videography. Leo begins to descend the stairway, keeping his paws hovering above the guardrail just in case. I pull out my phone, using the screen as a flashlight for us. I'm serious, he acts so damn level-headed all the time. Everyone else in our group, not to be insulting them or nothing because they're my family, but... It can be pretty out there, yeah? You always say I'm calm and balanced, though. You mean generic and boring, man. Nah, like, you'd always hang in the- you're always hanging in the background, almost invisible-like, and then you say some snarky shit and everybody loses it. You're observant, yeah? Like Flynn, but less of an insulting shit about it. My parents, my siblings, they love you, dude. Mom's always asking me when Chase is gonna come around again. You reach the end of the stairway. The insides of my ears probably ruby red at this point. The back, the back lot of Parsons is mainly composed of old piles of dirt and some foundation, like they were planning on expanding before they shut down. I'm not gonna fuck internet people, you can ease up on the compliments. I turn and smirk at Leo, a little in disbelief that those words just left my mouth. We start walking. Good, I have no clue what you're into, actually. Honesty? Leo looks at me a little warily, that same guilty expression crossing his muzzle once again. And you know, muscles, I guess. I see Leo's eyes light up, his mob pulling into a fangy grin. It actually is a pretty frightening visage in the middle of the night. Where, where did anyone but Leo? Predators, man. You should come to you should come to more of my games if you want to see those. The internet exists too. Yeah, and how'd that work out for you earlier? I feel that pang of remembrance and the ensuing feelings of shame all over again. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Anyway, I am gonna go, y'all. I am tired. Love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!